you. Thank you. Um, so I just was going to beam the um, the book cover up there so people can see it. Um, so what we're going to do today, I was going to just tell you a little bit about uh, this book that is coming um, in the near future from um, the Michigan State University Press. There's anybody here from Wayne State University. Um, well, the, 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 the back story, the brief back story of this thing was, uh, of this book, is that when I did uh, Heaven Was Detroit, <clears throat> um, when, I, when I put that book together, originally that book was supposed to be, um, you know, essays, poems, and stories about Detroit uh, music. Uh, the Wayne State Press thought um, that it might be more interesting if it were essays. And um, at first I thought, I, I wasn't against that, I just didn't think I knew anybody who had, you know, essays on rock music. And then I thought about it for, I think it was about two minutes, and I did actually know a bunch of people like that. And um, so, we went ahead and did that. Now, it was a pretty successful book, I have to say. Uh, but I still had this in the back of my mind, and I knew that Michigan State and U of M had been interested in the book. I later found out Wayne was, too, but they didn't speak up fast enough. And um, so I, I set forth with Jim Daniels. I brought him on board. He gets his fiction published at Michigan State Press. So. Uh, he had a connection there, Julie there knew of me, so we made that connection and we started putting this thing together. And like the other anthologies, uh, it came together, um, you know, in a really fabulous way as these projects do, where people uh, all across the country, many well-known uh, writers, I mean, uh, you know, uh, widely known writers as well as some up-and-coming writers, uh, were uh, part of the book. So, um, and everyone did it for the sake of, you know, preserving just like they did with working class literature and just like they did with Heaven Was Detroit, preserving Detroit culture yeah. and history. So, uh, we started working on that. I'm just looking, I sent myself the little intro. I was going to share a bit of it. But I really had. Um, I really had uh, the idea, like before, to um, you know have a number of people who were in the books, and say there's people, a lot of people here, if they would just come and and read their uh, their material, read their poems that are in the book, and give you a flavor for it. What the book is, it's a um, it's a number of poems. I'm not sure how many pages it is. Uh, but it's a number of poems about Detroit music by, as I said, everybody from known writers, up and coming writers, um, and, uh, and, and we did include some lyrics in here. We were able to get some lyrics from um, some interesting uh, people. And um, so we pulled it together and then sort of using the Heaven Was Detroit format we broke it down by, you know, genre of music. So, um, so we, we uh, started it, we put in the first part of it, excuse me, <coughs> is jazz poetry. Poems about Detroit jazz, I should say. And then poems about Detroit blues. And poems about nor what we called Northern Soul, and that way we could get, um, you know, the Fortune Records um, under with Motown. We didn't want to really just make it Motown, because uh, there's so much other uh, good Northern Soul, as they call it in England. <clears throat> and then George Clinton, and you know, all that kind of stuff, if we went that. So it's Northern Soul, then there's rock, and then the last part of it are poems uh, about Detroit uh, hip hop and techno. Really nice techno section by Mandy Comer's. Uh, she did this incredible workshop 
I think a couple summers ago. Um, and the students uh, worked with some of the major techno writers in Detroit, and uh, uh, musicians, and they kind of played off each other and created some cool poems. So a big chunk of that section is from Nandi and her, I believe, Inside Out students, uh, or citywide poets or whatever. I'm not sure. I saw it in the paper, and I thought, wow, this is incredible, before, before I thought of this book. So anyway, that's a picture of the cover that uh, Michigan State uh, came up with. And um, my main thing <coughs> is, you know, I like a lot of color so people see it and buy the book. You know. um, so I thought this was good and colorful. Um, the other thing I had in mind is not only tapping a lot of writers, and many of them are sitting around this table now, uh, but also, I, I wanted to get, uh, I'm friends with um, Duke Fakur, who's the last living member of the um, Four Tops and still lives in Detroit. And I wanted Duke involved in it, and he was happy to be involved with it. And so uh, I had him uh, do a forward for it so he could be part of it. There, there are some Four Top poems, not by him, but I mean about the Four Tops in there. Uh, as well. So Duke did the foreword to it. Another poet from Detroit had a, a great essay. We used it as sort of at the end of the book. Uh, Lawrence Joseph had a, uh, um, um, a, a long uh, inter not interview, but essay in uh, Tin House. I think that's the one he's usually does his music stuff in. So uh, we put we tacked that on at the end. Talks about how important Detroit music overall has been to people. Uh, all around the world and so forth. So that's pretty much um, the concept of it. And I thought um, what we could do is look at the poem sort of uh, with the folks that we have here in order of the genres. Um, so we have um, Bill Harris uh, is in the jazz. A couple poems, I think. Oh, really? came to see oh, you came to see what's in it? Okay, I better get the table out. Uh, and Bill Harris, and then Chris Tisch has a really cool poem uh, in the jazz section uh, of, of the book. And then Mark uh, James uh, Andrews has a, has a couple of poems. One, though, is in the jazz section on Eddie Jefferson, <coughs> who was murdered here outside Baker's. Um, you know, a few decades ago, and uh, but he also has one on the MC5 that that he'll share with us. And um, um, Dawn, I'm trying to think what's do you know what section you're in? I'm probably in the Motown section. Oh right. My poem references Marvin Gaye. Okay, so you see how well I know my book, uh, uh -huh. or how well I know <laughs> anything in my life, really. I mean, literally, at five to one, I was I, I had finished a performance out at Center Campus and then raced over here sweating. And that's why I think I'm coughing a little bit, doing too much John Lee Hooker uh, music. So, um, Chris, do you want to favor us with your uh, piece and talk a little bit about it? I do. I have George's poems. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, and George has, I think, a jazz and a soul uh, one on Art uh, yeah. Franklin. So do you mind? I'll, I'll, you I'll read his, yeah. So George Tisch is in it for those uh, who don't know. And um, he teaches over at CCS. So here are the two poems that George Tisch wrote. Uh, this one is called Vintage Soul. It once seemed that love was an exchange of pleasantries that sometimes attained Elysian fields of joy, a way for me to take you higher, as the old song goes. But now it's clear that women take men for a herd of oafs, grazing at their pleasure, and lead them around by the nose of other protuberance, an endless procession of drooling studs, the proverbial chain of fools. And um, this very short one called Jazz. Jazz leads us, rock leads us, boogie leads us, poems lead us, sexy ways lead us, Detroit drives us. 
And um, my selection is from an old play that I wrote in the 90s about Detroit entitled Carmen, a play in D. And um, this is uh, one scene which is really the music of citation and uh, the music of insurrection. And, and if you are insulted by any words, uh, the voices belong to Miles Davis, Bobby Seale, Stumpy Carmichael, and so on. And starts with a quote by uh, Césaire. And suddenly shouts lit up the silence. We had attacked, we the slaves, we the dung underfoot, we the animals with patient hooves. We were running like madmen. Shots rang out, we were striking, and the flames flickered sweetly on our cheeks. Dear Faye, I have not been a model prisoner, and the slant of my reading and intellectual interest is oriented toward the best interest and survival of my class. The point is that because I have not rushed to please all concern, I am doing natural life for second degree robbery. I am looking forward to seeing you. Sincerely, George. The dope was so bad in Detroit, it was like Philly Joe used to say about some dope. You could have bought a Hershey bar and saved your money because it was cut so much. And so that gradually makes your tolerance for it go away. Shooting it wasn't doing nothing for me except putting more holes in my arms. I was only doing it for that fucking feeling you get sticking a needle in your arm. And then, all of a sudden, I didn't want to put no more holes in my arms, so I stopped. Without that struggle, without that knowledge of the practice of action, there's nothing but a fancy dress parade and the blare of trumpets. We hate you, white people. We hate you, white people. The next time one of you jive ass patties comes accusing me of hating you because of the color of your skin, I will kick you in your ass. They want us to say, uh-uh, boss man, that's not what it means later for you, hockey. We already had our riot, and we're here to show you how it's done. Motown, if you don't come around, we are going to burn you down. I have folded my sorrows into the mantle of summer night. What is tomorrow that it cannot come today? Thank you. Yeah, I should have also mentioned, because I didn't really say much about it, but in, in the overall the genres, I mean, there's poems by, um, and we're going to hear uh, a couple of them by Robert Hayden's in there, Phil Levine's in there, uh, Ed Hirsch is in there, June Jordan is in there, uh, Toy Derricott, um, yeah, Rita Dove. And so there's a lot of well-known poets um, in, in the book, along with some lyrics we were able to get. Um, f there's, um, uh, well, there's three lyrics by three of the MC5, anyway. And I think the three who really wrote a lot of the words in the music. Uh, they're all included. Rob Tyner's in and Fred Sonic Smith is in. That's why I was going to have you do City Slide. Can you sing it? So I'm just kidding. Would know the words. I'm kidding. Well, nobody does. That's, right. that's what we learned getting there. Uh, and of course, uh, Rob's in it and uh, Wayne Kramer's in it. He has a great uh, song called Going Back to Detroit that I thought was appropriate. But there's other people that you might not expect in it, uh, but they do have songs about Detroit. Uh, Paul Simon is one. Do, do, how many of you know the song? By Paul Simon. Okay. Is that a hell of a hockey team. Yes, it's it's a hobo's lament or something like that. So uh, he he was kind enough to uh, uh, include you know let us include him. Another guy. It's a song that mentions Little Willie John in it, and I really love the song called Somewhere Down a Crazy River. Uh, Robbie Robertson. Very um, very easy to work with. Very kind. Uh, and quick, but you know the musicians are always quicker than poets. Uh, their permissions are like, because you know, it comes from their lawyer or something, so they're like, boom. Uh, Eminem's got a couple of pieces in it. Um, uh, Jack White's got a, a poem in it that he had written. 
Um, and uh, just kind of fat, we got Fats Domino, who knew? He wrote a song called Detroit City Blues. Uh, we do have uh, the Hastings Street Opera. Uh, it was never really written down anywhere, so I transcribed it, and uh, it's in the book um, by Detroit Count. Home, um, Detroit Bound uh, is in there, blues song. So anyway, that's the kind of the cut of it is um, lots and lots of folks like that. Uh, and Bill, do you want to read yours? I might have to open it up again if, if it closed. So Bill has, um, and then we have poems like, like uh, Bill's about, you know, hometown um, heroes. Uh, Melba's got a couple like that too. Yeah, this is Ron Carter, who is a uh, bassist, jazz bassist, played with Miles for years, and is probably one of the most recorded musicians in the history of the world. He's on everybody's album, um, jazz, blues, rock, whatever. And uh, I had the opportunity, actually, to read <coughs> with him once. It was a reading at the DIA, and he was there to promote his book on uh, his autobiography. Oh. And I got up to read, and he came up and started playing behind me. Wow. tt would on myself and uh, did the best I could going forward. Very elegant man. Um, and reading his book, you'll get, get a real sense of the, ba the, the purpose of the bass in jazz. So this is a kind of tribute to him. It's called The Pulse in Autumn. It's a quote from him, the first thing I learned was how important it was for the bass to play the pulse. Is and was there when it was, and is now still stalwart, moderate of manner, but steadfast in support was and is the pulse, punch, beat. Whether at a strummed saunter or a full throttle charge is in charge is ever gracious as a gift bouquet, elegant as a silk pocket square of blazing oak leaf resplendence, is sturdy as a tree clinging to it with all its might. Mm. I just remembered the other one. You're in the Motown section, too, with the beans. Oh, OK. So, um, so uh, the other couple of people here, and let me know if I'm, you know, because I'm not you know, seeing you or remembering the, where you're at in the book. Uh, but uh, M Mark Andrews has a poem about Eddie Jefferson. You want to read that, and then we'll bring you back for the MC5. Okay. And then uh, writer Bush has one that it's kind of Motown, but it's kind of jazz. So what, I, I think he's in the jazz section. This is Mark James Andrews. Thank you. It's great to be here. Um, this poem has a huge backstory, but let me just say I, I've been a jazz head since high school, but um, I really like free jazz and electric jazz. Didn't find out about Eddie Jefferson until a radio station called WJZZ came out and found out about this bebopper who uh, sang these really cool tunes and he was doing something that nobody ever did. I think I talk about it in the poem, but he's a godfather of jazz vocalese, and, uh, and he had a lot of humor in his music. And then at, uh, as a librarian at the Wayne County Jail, I had a client who uh, became involved with Eddie Jefferson, uh, allegedly. And then uh, probably about 25 years ago, M.L. Liebler brought Ed Sanders to Detroit, and I was lucky enough to land in his workshop. And I really liked what he was doing with investigative poetry, investigative histories and verse. So Ed helped me out with this piece. And, uh, and this is a, a, a section of a very long poem. That's going to be the anthology. It's called Shot Three, Silenced the Singer, The Murder. Eddie Jefferson is on the marquee in Detroit, Baker's Keyboard Lounge. May 9th, 1979. 
1.35 in the a.m. When the music's over, step out into quiet night. One, two, three, four, exit. Bakers on Livernois Avenue into the Motor City Street. The patriarch lyric composer of jazz vocalese, griot poet who busted rhymes on the solos of the jazz giants for the world stage, is now hustling back to his road home, the Leland House Hotel, with friends Cheryl Francis, Leonard Paul Harrell, and Valerie Chalk. Eddie Jefferson shut down the gig early, some snide audience heckling, ripping the pickup band and his hard post-bopping alto player, Richie Cole, an attack from an avant-garde aficionado faction, or maybe just an unspoken fear or premonition that his ticket would be punched on the night train by a grim reaper in a chugging midnight special. Jefferson had spidey sense and threw a safety net over Cole, told him to lay out of his party, stay put with his flame, actress Brenda Vaccaro at the Pontchartrain Hotel. She was hanging in D-Town with the Alto Madness Man. Eddie Jefferson hit the street. Cheryl Francis painted a gothic tableau. We heard a loud bang. I saw smoke. It was the green Lincoln. I saw fire shoot out of the passenger side. Just a big burst of fire came out the window. I kept asking, where is Eddie? Leonard Paul Harrell followed Eddie out of the club, 53 of Detroit, a dancer and old running buddy of EJ. He viewed the green and chrome Lincoln of death pull around a checker cab and stop. Two shots close together rang out. I saw the barrel of the shotgun out the window firing. The third shot hit Eddie. He said, huh, like that. I guess the force of the shot turned him to the right and he started running. I looked up to the fourth shot coming at me. I could only see the barrel of the person, the barrel of the gun that was holding the shadow of the person holding the gun. It was a green Lincoln town car. Light green or dark green? Green like the green in a flower. Green like a leaf? That green. Green like the St. Patrick's Day hats? Not that bright, not that bright, a green leaf. Uh, like a green leaf? Green leaf, that's all. Bang, 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 bang. Paul hit the bricks, yelled, get down. The Lincoln made a U-turn. The killer made good his escape. The artist who put words to Eddie Harris's Freedom Jazz Dance took flight, made last dance steps, 35 feet down an alley, made the big jump vamping, looping, riffing, a funky, gurgling, new vocalese, fresh for the yank by the Sandman with the shepherd's crook. I said shotgun, four blasts from the driver, Lincoln Continental, late model, leaf green. I said shot three, silence the singer, put him out, baby, off the spinning earth. And then there's a, a poem in that section, and, I've, and then we'll uh, go I, uh, with the Robin into the blues, and, um, and then uh, Todd has a couple of Hayden ones. But before that, writer Al Bush has a poem in. It's it's a it's a, it's a strong poem, and it's a good uh, performing poem too. So. They'll probably maybe perform. This is called the Love Supreme. Boom, 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 boom. A love supreme. Boom, 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 boom. A love supreme. Boom, 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 boom. This is not the Primex remixed with Holland Dozier Holland. This is not a Florence Ballard ballad boosting us out of the Brewster projects. But this is truly a love supreme. Hugging us with black and blue strung out arms while all about us the equinox screams 
piercing our nights of a thousand eyes with a thousand plaintive sighs. Boom, 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 boom. A love supreme, a love supreme. Blow, train, blow, blow black blood through that sax. Swing that golden axe. Brass magic till her arms roped off with strings. Blow us a few of your favorite things. Your spit valves open and drip into the dust. Hold still your muddy music until we all see. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. A love supreme, a love supreme. A supreme love has four parts. Acknowledgement, pursuance, resolution, and song. We acknowledge drinking and drugs as we pursued them, but we found in them no resolution and no song. So we died blaring, ba -da, da 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 Repeating the history of Billy, Miles, and Bird, echoing into the emptiness, notes still unheard, treated like lords all over the world, only to come back and have the shit beaten out of us on the streets that we love. We came back out of love. We endured out of love. Our art was birthed out of love. We tarry out of love, a supreme love. Keep sacred this music called jazz our only original art form, shapely and fertile, Hauser in your ear, her bosom black, her eyes kind of blue. She is our only true legacy. Boom, 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 boom. A love supreme, a love supreme. And we did love supremely once. What's going on? What it is, what it bees like? It's all love, cat. Once we spoke like that, boom, 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 boom. A love supreme, a love supreme, a love supreme. Riding the blue train to infinity, echoing across the universe as notes. We will no longer need fear of a thousand eyes, and we will no longer have need for needles, offering placebos of what will only be found in a love supreme. A love supreme, a love supreme. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. Very good. Writer Bush. Yeah, now the blues section, there's um, a couple of poems by Robin Ikeley, and, um, and then and Todd is going to uh, read um, the Robert Hayden pieces that are in the book. So, Robin. Thank you. <clears throat> The uh, first piece I'm going to read is um, essentially the genesis of this was the work that we did at the artist workshop and it plays on the fact that there was such a closeness between the musicians and the writers, there's so much energy shared that it was kind of once in a lifetime. This is called Blues Scholars at Work for John and Charles, John Sinclair and Charles Moore. I don't know if you remember Charles Moore, he was a cornetist, a uh, flugelhornist, great, great guy. And uh, he passed about three years ago now, I think. And uh, he was big in Detroit, and then he went to UCLA and was taught in the, essentially he was a musical anthropologist and traveled the world uh, gathering uh, the ethnography of, of musical roots and did great work. And never gave up his playing, played with a lot of major musicians and made great contributions to not only the music, but to his students. Blue Scholars at Work. A couple of guys getting down, down on the blues train, going on downtown. Brothers in the blues, screaming about their dues, about the currency of musical union that's all paid up, all made up in the union of musical skins. 
about Coltrane on the Spirit Express, about where the breath comes in, about where the music comes out, about images of rattlesnakes dressing us up in our dreams and being blessed with a talent and a whole lot of love, about the bridge over muddy waters and the woodshed and the years and the tears and the big horn of the Spirit, about the scholarly endeavor of footnoting our lives, making meat memory melodies, melodious improvisations, improvised histories, the talent you're born with can't be given to or away. About another day on the glory train, Motown to New Orleans to LA, about that simple geography and the enormous memories in between. This next one is uh, going to be a tough to read. This is dedicated to George Garnett, a young horn player who died at a very young Can age. Can A young horn player who died. Died at a very young age. The whole the George Garnett musician entered, garners the man of the most gentle I've known. Throne, fate accompli, fate diaboli. Throne as the color of his skin. Thrown to on black man walk, gate, the gated death, flying and falling, play. I asked of death that music, but my day talks on in endless silence. From the cellar, the bridge of what final moment, of what face bound in the last second, I still see light over the expressway and will not know the radical of that memory. Witness scores pale in my ears while the brain enlarges the horn in my heart. Faded sounds where arms and lips grip, invisible, torn into, paper, all paper, outcut angles, but to cut bit to form by the wind. Wind brings George as it took your silent brass and steel left behind. Mm. <laughs> Todd, just so I can make sure to get everybody in, would you pick one of Robert's? Um, tell us the two that are in there. And okay, yeah, the two are uh, homage to the Empress of the Blues, um, <coughs> Smith, and um, mourning for the Queen of Sunday, um, which you like. I, I like that mourning of the Queen of Sunday. Mourning coming up. Um, as many of you know, um, Robert Eden grew up, um, he was born in 1913, and grew up on the east side in Paradise Valley, and uh, uh, found his way kind of miraculously to uh, become a student here um, at Wayne State, before it was Wayne State, in the 30s. And, uh, so much of his poetry comes from his childhood, which was complicated. And, um, but um, he was also very much attuned to uh, the sounds of people speaking, but also various kinds of rhetorical uh, turns and, of course, music. So this particular song comes, uh, not poem, but poem about a singer, um, Modell comes from his memories of uh, Second Baptist Church, where he went regularly. And um, while in some ways it perhaps is a eulogy, in some ways I think it's really what Frank Rashid calls um, blues elegy, uh, but it alludes to him, gospel, the kind of music you would hear in church. Um, morning poem for the Queen of Sunday. Lawrence lost him his mockingbird, his fancy warbler, 
Satan's sweet talker, or bullets huster. Who would have thought she'd end that way? Four bullets huster, and the world a clang with evil. Who's going to make old hardened sinner men tremble now, and the righteous flock? Oh, who, and oh, who will sing Jesus down to help with struggling and doing without and being colored all through Blue Monday? Till way next Sunday. All those angels in their crescent clouds and finery, the true believers saw when she reared back her head and sang, all those angels are surely weeping. Who would have thought she'd end that way? Four holes in her heart, the gold works wrecked, but she looked so natural in her big bronze coffin, among the broken hearts and gates ajar. It's as if any moment she'd lift her head from its pillow of chill gardenias and turn this quiet into shouting Sunday and make folks forget what she did on Monday. Oh, cease. Satan sweet talked her and four bullets hushed her. Lord's lost him his diva, his fancy warbler's gone. Who would have thought, who would have thought she'd end that way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So then Motown is represented by Dawn. Um, she's in the Motown section. And um, I don't know if there's any other Motowners here. Oh my goodness. Then we'll go into the Rockers. I see Tom, he's rocking back there on the heroine. All right. Um, this is a poem about an earthquake. We've had a couple of earthquakes in Detroit, and I've felt them both. But this is the earthquake of the future. And it will help if you think of this as sort of a prophetic vision, okay? Mm -hmm. And the title goes right into the poem. Dear Detroit Earthquake, you show Reggie from the shelter and his sister Suzanne from Lafayette Park the undeniable facts of life, action, change. Slow or fast, your plates slip and stop. You're adorable when frustrated, stamping your invisible earthquake foot like a sexy lady in a 1950s sitcom. Friction traps you. Desire to shake loose all the conflict building up in your soul. You love Detroit when it plays your favorite song. I can almost hear you hum along with Marvin Gaye. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. Talk to me. It's all pressure, no release. Trust me, I know how much earth aches when the margins of one plate slam into another. You're a geological megastar, thwarted way too long. And you're here to shake the city until justice is as common as winter. Earthquake, I'm balancing on my own skittery floor, house shaking like a huge dog scratching behind its ear. I hear you are exhale of pleasure as ground shifts the foundation. I wonder if Belle Isle is safe. A bronze child holds water in cupped hands Bet it bounces away like water falling up. Statues of mothers are crying in churches and graveyards, and a new crack streaks through carved stone where broken Jesus blesses broken children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Carolyn Strio is a poet, a uh, musician who's known all, all around the country and actually works in Europe quite a bit. Uh, she has a poem in uh, the collection 
uh, in, in the rock section of it, and uh, she's working on or just completing a book of poetry, and uh, so I thought this would be a good one to include. Please welcome Carolyn Strio. Okay, so mine was originally going to be a song, and, and so it's not yet, you know. Um, a lot of my lyrics are kind of poems, too. I mean, it's, it's hard to explain. Sometimes I pull things out for a song. And this one was a rhymer, and, and it was about growing up in the city. And most of my life, I've lived in the city um, of Detroit. Actually, my sister's here, so she could recognize some of what I'm talking about. And my niece, so Patty and Elena are here. They came down today. Um, and ML, thanks again. Oh, thank you for coming. Okay, so this is called City Music Lights. Bear with me now. <laughs> Gotta get gone, Detroit rock and roll, under my fingers, with delicate soul. You can't believe it. It hasn't been told. It's harder and harder, but dance passion's the goal. This isn't explained in words, just by action. Expression, extension of my own ascension. You take it all inside, you let it come out from the streets, from the city, to use it, never a doubt. From the lodge to Seven Mile, and near Van Dyke, Belle Isle Music, we played every night. Rosedale Park over to Cass Avenue, back near the South Field, the clubs with a view. To Plymouth Road and under, by the track Southwest, Mexican Village to the backstage mess. We went in those old cars, we walked down the road, down to Masonic Temple where we were living large. Marshall Amps downtown, in places all the rage now, Midtown was Cass Corridor, home of the free and the brave. We love the vision of the wild road, we love the incision of the guitar load. We traveled everywhere in the streets so bold, and this wasn't called the after party because it was just cold. We're out in the streets, we're out on the stage, things haven't changed. So we're ambassadors of music made in the Motor City, it was never a deal. Because writing and performing is what makes us real. Oh, And another person in the rock section is a, a musical uh, superstar in Detroit uh, and a senior lecturer in the English department. Uh, he was a student of mine many years ago, uh, a pretty hip student. He was in Weeping Rachel at the time, as I recall. Uh, but he, he has a, a poem lyric from the book, uh, and I believe he, well now he's, um, um, now I'm blanking. American Wax. No. American Mars. American Mars is his group, um, and they, they're quite good. Uh, kind of alt country. Um, and so, anyway, I, I wanted Tom to be a part of this. He was part of Heaven Was Detroit. Tom? Thank you. This is Thomas Trimble. I'm really honored to have a piece in here. I don't feel like I deserve a piece in this collection, but uh, really, uh, so thanks very much. Um, I was in a band called America Mars in the uh, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, and uh, it was kind of strange. I kind of refer to it as kind of like a strange dead branch in America's uh, Detroit's rock history. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I was a huge fan of the British punk band The Clash, I still am. I'm a huge fan of Joe Strummer's lyrics. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, British white anti racist but they had songs, you know, White Riot. So it was like a kid growing up in the suburbs, I didn't know what that meant. It really kind of flipped my lid. Uh, and this was before the internet, so you couldn't like research what the songs meant. You had to kind of figure it out. So that was very interesting to me. Um, and uh, the Detroit rock scene in the 90s had become uh, pretty racially segregated, a fairly segregated scene. Um, and I was really trying to figure out how does whiteness and ethnicity play in that? Um, this was also a period in which a lot of bands, white rock bands, who uh, didn't even live in the city would take their press photos on Heidelberg Street, uh, <laughs> which I always thought was politically problematic, sort of the beginning of kind of a ruin porn 
uh, that I'm sure that my band participated in uh, moment, you know, moments, but I was always very aware of that. So we wrote a song called Muscle Car that some people uh, talked a little bit about. So I wrote the lyric for that song as I'd read it. So, uh, you know, again, think of it, Joe Strummer is like, my, you can hear me trying to get at that. So anyway, it's called Muscle Car. White boy, black city, and history won't let it bend around me. Show me no liberal pity. Losers hate to see a winner gloat. But it's so easy in the wake. It's such breezy real estate. Power and position fade. You try to get behind the cathode face. Dance hall, empty floor, the people movers moving around the core. But it's so sleepy when it gets late. It's so breezy, it's like the bat cave. So take me for a ride in your muscle car. Show me all the places that you know. Tell me where the people are. Where did all of Henry's money go? Man, confess. Take me for a ride in your muscle car. Show me where the tigers used to play. Tell me, is the river far? Was Black Bottom all the things they used to say? Man, confess. Take me for a ride in your muscle car. Show me all the places that you know. Open up your pedals. Dust off your medals in the city in your muscle car. Thank you. Mm. So I wanted to, uh, Mark has one on the MC5 too. Uh, I know we're kind of at our, our limit. Um, John Lamb has a piece uh, in it too uh, as well. I think the last cigarette, today's last cigarette. Um, so um, are there any questions? I mean, are there any, any questions anybody might have? When are we going to be able to get this work? Uh, it will be probably start appearing later in the summer. It's in production right now. So um, it's gone through the copy edits and all that kind of stuff. And now they're typesetting it and, you know, They've got their blurbs and all their little stuff together for it. So it, it, um, it will be out probably like be a little before Labor Day, I think. And we'll start seeing some real galleys with, that look like that. And, and that was the idea, too, with that question, is this was going to be out. Uh, the idea was that it would be out um, in, you know, like now, in like spring. And so that's why when uh, uh, Walter was looking for people to, uh, you know, participate in the brown bag, which I've done before, uh, I thought, well, April, perfect, poetry month, and this great book will be out, but of course that's not how life is. Um, other questions? What's it like to know so many amazing poets? Uh, it's unbelievable, actually. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew a kid born here on campus could uh, would know so many great writers and around this table and across the country? Well, thank you for having us, Walter. We appreciate it. With us, I want to thank this group of uh, uh, poets that uh, participated. Uh, it was an absolutely wonderful way to bring to an end the Home Back series. And um, we're recruiting for next year on the on the table before you, there is a form that if you move to um, to sign up, uh, it provides an opportunity for people across various um, humanities, and social sciences, and arts disciplines to meet in this room and share their ideas. So it's a pretty cool series. You know, you hear, you learn some cool stuff in this room. But in any way, I want to sort to give the poets and and um, ML a a wonderful round of applause for their contribution today. Thank you. you know, I wanted to mention while there were some poetry lovers in the room, um, I'm starting uh, this new program starts Friday. It's the All Access Cafe featuring differently abled writers and musicians. And this Friday we kick it off with Ishmael Reed and Jillian uh, Weiss uh, and, and Tennessee Reed, uh, Ishmael's daughter. And then on Tuesday right away, and these are all at Third Man uh, Records, 
On Tuesday, right away, uh, we have several of the poets around this table. It's going to be Andre Kudrescu, along with Bill Harris and Robin Eichley and George and Chris Tisch and John Sinclair, and I'm missing someone else. Ken Michalowski. Oh, Ken Michalowski's coming in. So uh, then they all were friends and worked with uh, Andre over the years and back in the early days of Detroit Plain State history. So it's free. Come on over. It's third man at 7 o'clock Friday is the first one. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.